Hello everyone, this is You've Got 5 Options, a radio show where we prove that 5 is a magic number. Our experts will give you 5 tips on how to make your private or professional life better. We will solve your life challenge by giving you 5 different options to choose from. And our guests will answer 5 exciting questions while live on air. Tune in and feel the magic of 5. Hello everyone, this is Marta and this is Anna and this is You've Got 5 Options show for the very first time at Galarup Radio and we are very happy to be here guys. Yes, we hope that you guys are happy as well. Yes, if not, then you can basically like turn it off. But uh, give us a try because usually our show is aired in Ungdoms Radio. And I'm not sure if I even pronounced it, if it's even close to the actual pronunciation. But uh, we now also got a time slot for Galarup Radio. And I guess it's Friday evening right now, somewhere around eight o'clock. So. So depending on what you are doing, guys, if you are preparing for a, for a nice family evening or for a night out, for, for a meeting with friends, while preparing yourself, you can actually listen, in, listen to our program and uh, just get into the mood. And what kind of mood, Marta, you think people would get today while res listening to us? Well, I'm really, really hoping that they will not get into depressive mood because what we are talking about today are predictions for 2019. And I must say that Anna is the one who is leading that show. And I anyway tried to prepare myself a little bit. So I did ask Google for some prediction of 2019. I quickly got depressed. So I asked for positive predictions for 2019 and they don't exist. So even really? when I asked for positive ones, when I started to listen about it, it was about earthquakes and uh, tornadoes and uh, yeah, very many different things that did not sound very positive. So I hope you have something really good for us today. Yes, I also hope so. <laughs> no, guys. OK, honestly, this may not be the most cheerful optimistic show that you will ever find but it might be a little bit thrilling uh, you know um, uh, daunting maybe it you can actually take it a little bit as a x files kind of thing I'm, I'm not I'm not sure I'm trying to make the best out what was given some people love to listen about what future holds for them we like to know those predictions and stuff yes I have to admit that most of them are not so positive but I also think it's because of the human nature we try to predict what actually will happen that could put us in danger. So maybe that's why we don't focus on the good predictions. What do you think, Marta? Well, it makes sense what you're saying. And yet still, I am really disappointed in human race <laughs> that we are still looking into negative stuff. And we are, st I mean, it's good to think about what was the dangerous stuff that can happen. Mm -hmm. But why can't we do both? It's yeah. not like we should deny, you know, that there might be some dangers happening. But why can't we do both? I, f I don't know. I think we suck as a human race. No, I'm joking. <laughs> no, but that gets really grim very quickly. Yeah. Ha have a happy Friday, guys. No, OK. Maybe this will answer your question because I actually was researching first topic, meaning why do we need to or feel a desire to predict the future in the first place? Because we do predictions all the time, even we as 
as individuals, we try to predict the weather, we try to predict the stock market, or uh, is it the best uh, idea now to buy a house? Or, so we actually are trying to predict the future all the time. And then every year we have a lot of scientists, economists, politicians, and psychic uh, people who are trying to make predict predictions for the year to come. And then we also have people who are trying to predict, you know, the fate of the humanity. So apparently that's something that we all do. And I was trying to figure out why. So I found something really cool from a psychologist called David Ropek, and this was published in Psychology Today. And he said, okay, so why do we try to predict the future when we are so often wrong? Which, by the way, just gives you a little hint that usually most of prediction sucks. So I predict that far in the future, people still will be trying to predict the future. For the same reason we do it now, to give ourselves the feeling of control over our fate. The study of the psychology of risk perception has found that one of the most powerful influences on fear is uncertainty. The less we know, the more threatened we feel because lack of knowledge means we don't know what we need to know to protect ourselves, which equates to lack of control over health and safety, life and death. So basically, trying to predict the future is one of the strategies of survival. It does make sense. Mm -hmm. Definitely it does make sense. And even from simple things like trying to predict the weather, you yeah. actually do that because you want to protect yourself from the weather conditions, right? So of course it makes sense. And yet, as you have said, and that was also like when you said, why do we do that? Right away, I thought about this feeling of control. That was right away what I thought about. And having been working in the past in uh, in the corporate world and looking, actually my master thesis was about forecasting transport yeah. volumes and costs for a wind turbine industry <laughs> and these kind of things. And we have a lot of data, a lot mm -hmm. of data available for that. And we try to forecast it because we want to prepare ourselves to be able to do that. And yet we fail. Yeah, that's the funny part that we actually fail miserably if we compare the effort we put into trying to predict uh, the, the future. And by future, I don't mean what will happen in 2025, but actually, yeah, what would be the, um, even what will be the stock market, you know? If, if it would be relatively easy to predict, I guess everyone would be rich by playing on the stock market, right? So it's interesting that you mentioned that, Marta. Dennis, are you trying to predict the future? Don't we all? Don't we all? That's a very good answer because I already said that we all try to. Okay, are you trying to? Uh, of course, we are trying to predict, you know, everyday things like the weather and stuff. But do you ever wonder, like, what will happen with me and my life in a year or or five? And you try to, like, you know, look online for the predictions, or you're not that type of guy? Uh, I make plans. Mm -hmm. I, I have wishes, I have thoughts, but trying to predict what will happen, I, I don't really do that, no. Would you like to know the future? No. No. That's actually a very interesting question because, guys, I just said that we are all trying to predict the future, you know, like the scientists and, and the weathermen and the psychics and uh, economists and, you know, predict, predict, because this is a survival strategy. Yet, if I will ask someone, would you like to know your future? Most of people answer no. Why do you think that is? What if you tell me that I'm going to die tomorrow? That's one thing. Uh, what would you do then? I don't know. <laughs> and, and that's kind of the point, because if I was told that I was going to die tomorrow, that would, would I go kill somebody? Because I know I would go to jail for the rest of my life. Okay, that's an interesting thought. I don't know what would happen if I was told that something crazy was going to happen to me tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And it's, people suck, you know. So <laughs> <laughs> okay. what if 10 people knew that they were going to die in a week? Would they act? Would they be the best possible version of themselves or would they 
show how much they actually suck. That's super interesting thought you are having there. Yeah, and I think we would encounter both and probably the chances are 50 50 mm -hmm. and we would have probably five of them showing the best and five of them showing the worst because I think we do have both. We are actually all and each and every one of us has the worst factor and the best factor mm -hmm. and none of us knows which factor we are going to pull until we are actually tested in that situation. And that's what we need. We need that magic. That's why we want to predict because we want to have the sense of control and we want to prepare as good as possible. But if we were given a choice to actually know exactly what will happen the every day of our lives, we would actually not want it because what to live for then? If everything exactly. is predicted, if everything is certain, if you know what will happen every day of your life, it totally misses the purpose, right? It totally misses the magic. It totally misses the, yeah. And that that's exactly what I stumble upon, guys, because I was thinking we so much want to predict the future, to prepare ourselves, or we look at these predictions and people are trying to tell us how the world will look like. But if I am given a chance of... I can tell you exactly how the world will look like or I can tell you exactly, you know, how your life will look like that you will, you know, go out of this, let's say, uncertainty and you will be happy or whatever, whatever that is. Suddenly I'm like, what's the purpose to live anymore? <laughs> it's like if I know everything and I know how I will end and maybe now we are getting into something deeper, like what's the purpose of life? You know, because if we would know our life ahead, we wouldn't like to live it anymore. It's not exciting anymore. So I was talking to a friend yesterday. Greetings, Jorn. And Greetings. He, and he told me, you know, what could be a better purpose in life than enjoying it? And I just found it so simple and so profound. I was just like, yeah. Like no matter if we know the future or don't know the future, mm -hmm. if we put the purpose for ourselves to do what brings us joy, we can live the purpose. Yeah. This is so cool. But then the question is, can we not enjoy what we know already? Because it would look like that it's very hard to enjoy something that is already very predictable. And that I think that this is a very philosophical question is, because we have never been mm -hmm. even in a position where we could actually sense mm -hmm. something like that because we know that everything can change from one day to another, from one moment to another. So, of course, we cannot even, you know, but I think actually if you think about so many stories or so many people, uh, so many people that say like, I just couldn't bear it anymore. Everything was so predictable. I mm -hmm. had to, I don't know, quit that job or leave that relationship or something. Mm -hmm. It seems as if we are prone to not to enjoy when everything is too predictable. I think this is one of the biggest ironies that I have discovered this year. We want to predict to feel safe, yet we don't want to predict too much to feel any type of a purpose of enjoyment. So uh, yeah, what the hell do we want humans? It's actually quite funny. Uh, before we will get to the to the uh, song break, because we have also some songs that we will play today. I actually uh, would like to share with you the methods that people are using to predict the future. If you would ever want to try, because you know, Dennis, maybe you will change your mind and you will go home today and you will be like, hmm, I will try to predict something. So economic forecasters are using two strategies. One is called the linear strategy, and that is based on the re principle that the pattern repeats. So basically what happened today will probably happen tomorrow and will probably happen in a year. So we are looking for patterns of behavior, for instance, of an economical market. But that is said to be um, quite dangerous because uh, we cannot see change changes that come radically. So basically, if we are used to the same patterns and we are predicting the future based on, yeah, it was like this yesterday and a year ago, so it means that it will be more or less like this now, we are totally blind for drastic changes. So the most famous and most ballsy predictors are actually those guys who are predicting something out of 
the blue out of the cosmos, you know, like suddenly they make a risk and they say that, I don't know, there is a there will be a new cryptocurrency when no one even heard about, for instance, cryptocurrency or something. They are usually worse as at the average predictability. So if we will make like the average of how good they are, they are worse. But because they have sometimes those two big predictions that somehow work, they are way more, more famous. So we can do, yeah, we can either try to see the patterns or we can actually try to figure out what would be the most outrageous thing that would happen and try to go with that. And then I like those methods now. There are also methods used by clairvoyants or psychics. You know, do you believe in psychic guys? That there are some people who have some psychic abilities uh, and can see into future, Marta? I believe that there are people who have a connection with uh, the surroundings, with the nature, mm -hmm. with the energies around uh, who, that are higher than what we know as average person. And therefore they can sense and feel more than a standard human being's brain is allowing for us to sense right now. And therefore I think that it is highly likely that those people who are able to connect with those energies and use that brain, their brain in this way, yes, they can see more than an average person that has not been able to tap into that yet. Okay. What about you, Danis? Do you believe in people with psychic abilities, that people can have psychic abilities? That's a good answer. Um, <laughs> Marta. <laughs> Marta has a good answer. I don't yeah. know. Mm -hmm. I don't know. But I, there's so much that we don't know as, as a species. So I, I, I have nothing to tell me that there are no people who can do it and mm -hmm. I have no reason to believe that it's not possible. So okay. I, I don't know. That's actually a quite good answer because I would say we will talk later about some of the most prominent psychics on the show. Uh, not on the show, on the show we today have no psychics, unfortunately. We wanted to, but we put this um, um, announcement on Facebook. And the funny thing is that we got some, uh, you know, comment like, yeah, thieves and scammers, you know. So there are very, this is a, the topic that can really like make people angry. Some people are like, yeah, this is bullshit. This doesn't exist. And I uh, like people who are open minded who say, you know, I don't know, but it's possible. Because if you are open to to actually to that kind of stuff, then uh, you don't limit yourself to some very prescribed version of the reality. But clairvoyant forecasters are forecasting based on different things. So the most common thing is dreams, vision, often dur during sleep, card reading, gazing upon objects like, for instance, crystal ball, fire or yes, there is a lady who is making prediction while she's looking at asparagus. That's the asparagus lady. Then there is channeling. So those are people who are claiming that they are receiving messages from some entities, be it aliens or higher energy or angels. Uh, there are people who claim who can do the astral traveling, meaning to travel to different places, also in space and time without, you know, physically traveling only their energy or astral body. And there are some people who just say, I have a feeling, I have an intuition, something tells me that this will happen. So uh, clairvoyant forecasters have, as you can see, a lot of different ways of figuring out the future. And probably because those things cannot be measured or are not documented, documented are very controversial. Uh, what do you think, Marta, about those ways of getting those uh, predictions or premonitions? I have entered to the time of my life where I am very open to whatever. And I think that documenting stuff is not uh, a determining factor, mm -hmm. because we even have a lot of things that are seemingly documented and then they are proven wrong uh, by the next generation or something like that. So having something documented or not is not a determining factor mm -hmm. for me. And I am very open to the uh, possibility that there are people who are really having this kind of experiences. And I am also open to the fact that some of them are scammers and thieves. I'm very open.
Yeah, I think we have scammers and thieves in absolutely every branch of whatever business or academia, there are always people who have some bad intentions or want to make money on something. So I think putting all the clairvoyants in the sack of thieves and scammers, it's simply unfair because I think there is more thieves and scammers among politicians than among, <laughs> among clairvoyants. Sorry. Yes, I said that I'm from Poland. <laughs> Uh, so a lot of history back there. Uh, but uh, before the song, I will only tell you what were determined. Uh, there were actually studies made, made on the uh, on the predicting the future. And some of the university guys and there was a guy called Tetlock. He actually made a series of challenges for people to learn how to predict better. And after uh, months, he discovered that they get better at predicting. And there are a couple of things that are enabling you to become a better predictor. And those are intelligence, domain expertise. So if you are an expert in something, uh, being in a team, team outperform individual at predicting always. Um, training in probability, so basically understanding the probability, statistical probability, and revision, meaning when you predict something and you can come back to it uh, in a day and make a revision, it will improve your prediction. And probably one of the most important things, open-mindedness. Only open-minded mind, open minded people are the best predictors. So those are people who are open that it can be this or this or this or this or this. So they actually ca can have a choice from a wider perspective or, or whatsoever. Does that open-mindedness include also channeling? So that you are so open minded that you are also open to receiving uh, messages from the uh, higher or I don't know if it's higher from some sort of entity. The research did not tell me that, unfortunately. And with this wonderful question, and I have to pause on it, we will hear the first song of the day and we will be back shortly. And we are back. This is Marta and... Anna. from You've Got Five Options with our new technician, Dennis, who has Hello. spoken and not even once and hopefully will continue to speak. Yes, so we are back after the break, guys, and you could hear Santana Black Magic Woman. And Marta has asked me a valid question. Is it a black magic woman or is it a magic woman? that is black and we don't know so if you know let us know you can find us at the five options.com or on facebook you've got five options and if you have an idea about the history of the song and what the title means let us know and we have chosen the song because we are starting a little bit more magical part of this show or at least this is how I like to see it because we will talk about the clairvoyance and I think the idea I had uh, to make actually because at the beginning we were thinking just to make a prediction show but why I thought that we could talk about the clairvoyance is because we had some heated reactions on Facebook from some people regarding the clairvoyance. So uh, I think the common perception is that uh, at least among the people that spoken, that those are thieves and scammers. So basically, psychic abilities are bullshit. And as we hinted here in a studio, we are very open. Uh, that it is a valid possibility and um, and I found it interesting and I also like to talk about the topics that are controversial so I thought why not why not talk about the clairvoyance and guys I have a question for you here in the studio do you know any famous psychic uh, person who predicts the future uh, clairvoyant do you have any does someone come to your mind anyone so i'm not sure if we can call that clairvoyant but though the, the i mean nostradamus yes that's basically that call that's the name that yeah. comes you know right away yes that is actually someone that is almost synonymous with with because actually i guess we should give you the definition of what clairvoyance is although i think we 
kind of know uh, instinctively. It's uh, an ability to perceive things or future events, events with senses that are not the standard senses. So basically we have five senses, which is the sight, the hearing, uh, smell, touch, and tasting. Uh, tasting, yes. And those predictions or information, sometimes it's information about also the past and the present come from outside of those senses. So it's extra sensory um, knowledge or perception. So basically, that's the clairvoyance. So quite unexplainable for most of people. Uh, so yes, Nostradamus is the first name that comes to mind. Um, Dennis, you know Nostradamus, right? Not personally, but like, yeah, we go way back. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> if you knew him personally, I would be considering it a miracle. Uh, no, yes, I know him, but I can't think of anyone else. Yeah, uh, Nostradamus, I think it's the most famous one. He was a French scientist, actually, physician who was living in 16th century. And somewhere on the way from science, he went into a cult and he was making quite a lot of predictions. Some of them uh, come even until this today's times. Uh, the problem with Nostradamus prediction is that he was writing them like in a form of riddles and and poems and it was 16th century so as the time goes by they are more and more easy to interpret in various ways you know so if you say something about you know a guy who is this and that you can basically pinpoint 10 possible guys who can be a uh, subject of that prediction but he is indeed the, the most famous I think everyone knows it uh, I also have looked at more modern mystics and some of them are really known uh, both of them are already dead but they were alive in 20th century one one of them was edgar casey and that was uh, an american clairvoyant who answered questions on subjects as healing reincarnation wars atlantis and future events while allegedly sleeping. So actually the guy didn't sit and just predict stuff. He was doing this in his sleep. So when he was sleeping, he had a secretary or he had people who were noting down things he was saying in his sleep. And many times he didn't remember what he was saying. And he also, uh, so he's known as a sleeping prophet. And uh, he's also notable for his contribution to the notions of diet and health, particularly the issues of food combining, acid alkaline diet, and the therapeutic use of food. He was considered the Nostradamus of his day. He gave more than 14,000 psychic readings in his lifetime, according to Museum of Hopkinsville, where there is a whole kind of thing about him. So if you are ever in Hopkinsville, you should definitely go and visit. And he made predictions that came true during his lifetime. And he also made a lot of predictions for the future. And now the, the funny thing is that he never asked and never took any money for any of his readings. People were coming to him from all over the United States. Uh, also during the wartime asking where uh, if their loved ones who went to fight on war are still alive and so on. He could have made so much money and he never took even a coin. So I would say the claim that he was a scammer kind of is, uh, you know, like uh, he didn't have any benefit and it was before Internet. So he was not like a, you know, Internet star or he was not doing any merch of any products and so on. He actually was a very religious guy and he believed in uh, missionary work and voluntary work. So he was that kind of a guy. Things that he has predicted was the stock market crash of 1929, which he predicted in 25. And he told it, uh, he said about this to his assistant and he said that he can make a lot of money if he will invest in the stock market because in four years it will crash, which happened. He also predicted World War II in 1935. And he predicted that there will be uh, advancement in medicine uh, that will make possible to make diagnosis from a drop of blood. 
that was in 1927. <laughs> so as you can imagine, for people, this was pure science fiction. Guys, have you ever heard about Edward Casey? No. Uh, I, I can't remember if I've heard the name, but I did remember when you mentioned the stock market crash that yeah. a story about someone predicting that and that he predicted. Yeah. Uh, you know what the funny part is? He claims that he has seen ghosts and people that were transparent since he was a kid and he thought it's normal. He thought that everyone sees and he was playing with them. Uh, so this is one of those people who looked like he was inclined to have that kind of abilities, if we would believe that this is true. And um, he also went under hypnosis when he was a young adult because he had some, uh, I think, problem with his throat, he couldn't speak. So he went into hyp hyp hypnosis. And after he came out of it, he suddenly said that he can predict the future. So it's really, really funny. Uh, because then he was just, you know, going into hypnosis by himself, sleeping and giving all of those predictions. So uh, just to end a little story of Edgar Casey, he has died when he was 67, left a lot of predictions behind him. And he also uh, claims that the year of second coming of Christ will be, would be 1998, which would mean that Christ is alive and he's 21 right now. He also claims that America's coast will be destroyed soon, uh, although there is no accurate date, but soon in 21st century, and that there will be a new groundbreaking dis uh, discovery in astronomy. These guys, I think this is kind of fluffy because we <laughs> discover things in astronomy all the time. But what he also claims, and this is very controversial, is that uh, there was a, um, a, a whole a civilization called Atlantis. I guess you heard about Atlantis, right? Yeah, but we uh, treat it as a legend because, you know, Homer, there was that guy, and not from Simpsons, that the Greek philosopher Homer, he wrote about Atlantis, which was a very advanced civilization in the ancient times that got destroyed and went underwater. So we assume it's somewhere on an island and then there was a catastrophe and they sank down. So Casey claims that they knew about the catastrophe that was about to come and they have recorded all, all their knowledge and experiences and everything uh, in three copies and they put them around the world. One is supposed to be in Bimini, the second one in Egypt, and the third one in Yucatan. And those are three holes of records to be discovered. And he claims that we, humanity, will discover them very soon. What do you think about that? About that specific one? About in general, like... <laughs> What do you think when you hear about this guy? Does it like, oh, kind of I think lame? it would be cool if Jesus Christ or the, what was the second Christ or what was the... Yeah, the second coming of Christ. Yeah, the second coming of Christ. That There, there is Jesus Christ somewhere there, 21 years old. Yeah. I think that would be really cool. Yeah. I like this. And uh, I think that Atlantis uh, is a big probability. I do think that uh, it's highly likely that there were previous versions of humanity that have advanced and then had some kind of a reset button because we did not achieve whatever the purpose was. Mm -hmm. I like this kind of um it sounds very, very interesting, this mm -hmm. kind of uh, things. It sounds very, uh, it sounds very interesting. Yeah. Dennis, what about, how about you? Um, the first thing that I, I, that springs to mind is that uh, this guy is not living in a vacuum. So, mm -hmm. and and the next thing, logically following from that is, you said that uh, the more you know, uh, mm -hmm. in a, in a certain field, uh, the better you are at predicting mm -hmm. stuff. Um, so my first question is, the four years before the crash, what laws changed? Mm -hmm. Was he able to see a pattern that predicted it? Mm -hmm. Or did someone just tell him, hey, it's going to crash? That's something. And, and there are so many circumstances when you when you predict things, like a, a stock crash. Because somebody predicted that the big one in 2007, they could see it because of some laws changing. And, and looking at the numbers, they could actually see that this is going to crash. Mm -hmm. And they predicted it and everybody laughed, like 
probably they did in 25 when, when he said it. So could he analyze something that led him to the prediction or was it a vision? That is a very good question, Dennis, and all of because, of course, he's he's far long, you know, that he passed away, I think, 40, 50 years ago. But the people who, who worked with him were claiming that all of his predictions were coming from this um, psychic readings that he had when he was sleeping. Mm. However, if we would want to be very critical and, you know, be open minded about it and not just jump into saying, yes, he was a prophet. This is possible that he could have been doing some background work and actually be able to predict some stuff because he had a knowledge and he was analyzing this. However, all the people that were living with him and around him claim that he was getting that, that they were basically writing down all those prophecies when he was sleeping. Right. Mm. But that is a very good question. And uh, it's something to think about because it is fully possible to, to say I get all of those readings from a sleep while you are actually, you know, in a daytime analyzing the trends and then you hit the bingo. He could be doing the, the, the calculations uh, subconsciously. Yeah. And not even be aware that he was actually just interpreting what he was seeing. That also is a very... A that, very that's good. not uncommon. Yes. That you know something bad is going to happen and you just know it and it actually happens, but you can't tell why you know it. Mm -hmm. And that you just subconsciously saw something yeah. that you didn't react to. I totally agree. And uh, I had more material prepared, but I think we will run out of time if we'll go into other psychics. But I would just like to say something about our own Polish, because Marta and I, we are from Poland originally, psychic, which uh, whose name is Krzysztof Jackowski. And the guy is famous in Poland because he is very good at predicting uh, the fate of missing people. And actually, he was many times hired by the police. Many times, you know, not it's not really loud because police also doesn't want to, you know, sound like cuckoo people because they, they, they hire a psychic. But he has a very well documented cases when he helped to solve murders, when he was able to say where missing people are. And he made uh, some predictions for 2019. But what he said was, it is very difficult to predict world scale events. It is way easier to predict or find something about a specific person because your brain as a psychic gets so much contaminated by all the information. You know, you watch TV, you listen to radio, you talk with people. And after some time, you don't know if you are getting a, a, some kind of a psychic reading or if you are just making rational predictions you cannot tell so he said that that's why uh, predicting the world scale events is way more difficult and when he works with people who are looking for their closed ones he usually don't talk with the family at the beginning he just gets a thing that belonged to the missing person like a piece of a, a cloth or or whatever and he tries to connect with the energy of that person or whatever without discussing anything to anyone first because then he thinks he will get somehow contaminated and he might start to make rational predictions. So that's a very interesting point because you said that maybe Casey was doing that subconsciously, you know, could be, could be. OK, guys, so I think we will go into the last part, which is predictions for 2019 from the internet but before we'll get there we will play you a little song so you can have some break from us because a break is always good well hello hello everyone and welcome after a short musical break yes this is you've got five options show this is marta and anna and our lovely technician dennis and today we are talking about predicting the future. Is it possible? Uh, is it necessary? Do we want to do it? Uh, is clairvoyance or psychic abilities a bunch of bullshit? And now we arrive to the third part of our show when we will discuss the most 
outrageous, weird, or just interesting predictions for 2019. And I would like to say that I have prepared some interesting things for you guys. However, Marta said at the beginning of the show that she has also made some Google research and she wasn't happy. Marta, is there anything that stood out for you from the predictions? So what stood out for me was uh, basically, I, I don't know if this is, this is, maybe because it sounds so likely because it's a lot about earthquakes and actually this thing that you talked about the american coastline that i found because i'd like checked several different things mm -hmm. and that was talking a lot about you know poor florida and uh, the coastline of us kind of uh, seems to be uh, very much in danger according to those uh, predictions so yeah, yeah uh, I will be honest with you guys. I think I went through I don't know how many predict predictions and predictors. I have also watched a lot of YouTube compilations of people who gathered a lot of those predictions. So I would tell you that it looks like it's a year where natural disasters are still thriving. So there is a lot of talk about United States. However, I have to say that I think uh, according to all those predictions, half of the states will be hit by something. So e even if one state will be hit by something, it will look like, whoa, those predictions were real because people are predicting about California and Florida and um, and Yosemite Park. And, uh, you know, th th there are apparently dangers, dangers everywhere. So United States, hold on, because it looks like you are about to be hit by a lot of different natural disasters. That I also saw a prediction about a, a volcano in uh, Italy, which I would assume it's uh, Vesuvius, I think. That was a lady from, I think, Australia who said that she had the reading that that there will be a, um, a volcano eruptive, a volcano that is uh, for a very long time inactive. So, yes, I would say there is a lot of talking about natural disasters. Then again, we have to admit that there is a lot of weather disruptions. So making a prediction that something will go wrong, uh, it's kind of not a prediction. It's almost a certainty. It's a pretty safe bet. Yes, yeah. I would say that when the prediction is getting on spot that tells you exactly the location and tells you exactly what kind of natural disaster, then I would take it into consideration because if I hear from a, from a psychic or from whoever, a lot of natural disasters. Um, yeah, thank you, lady. You just told me pretty much nothing. So the first thing I would like to tell you or ask you, do you know what doomsday clock is? Did you ever ha have heard maybe ring any bell? The, the nuclear doomsday clock. Uh, yes. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Uh, Marta? No. So in 1947, a members of bulletins of atomic scientists, I don't know what it is, but it sounds groovy, have figured out that they would make a clock that would show how many minutes to midnight and by minutes, I mean how close to the doomsday we are. So basically clock operates on a principle of 60 minutes. So if, for instance, it's quarter two, it's not so bad. But if it's like two minutes to midnight, it means it's very, very close to the doomsday. So the first prediction I would like to share with you is the prediction of those atomic scientists. And those are scientists from uh, all over the world, including Nobel Prize um, winners. I don't know, do you call it them winners? Do they win or do they? Yes. And I wanted to tell you where the doomsday clock is for 2019. And it is frozen to two minutes to midnight, which is not cool, guys, because there were only three times since the clock exists when it was three or min uh, three minutes or under and that was when we had the soviet's first nuclear test and uh, then u.s test of hydrogen bomb and when there was the lowest point in u.s soviet relations so the peak of the cold war in 84 and yeah mm, we were very low in 1991 that was 17 minutes 
till doomsday and uh, last year we jumped into two minutes and this year we are staying at two minutes so basically it's a uh, quite bad news and it comes from the scientific um yeah let's say side of the things so it's not a psychic prediction how do you feel about that guys groovy groovy okay no, it, it, <laughs> it, it's scary because it's made from uh, political observations and and the proliferation of nuclear weapons and yeah. uh, uh, the fear of iran getting it uh, the the fear that north korea will actually use it cuz mm -hmm. well their leaders are kind of crazy there is a prediction that there will be also a third world war but that comes from psychic uh, and that actually the kim jong the second will try to nuke the united states uh, but there will be a quick response and he will die in a process um, well we just hope that none of those things will happen but i guess people want to be safe for the future, right? So uh, you are right, Dennis, Domesday takes in consideration the political atmosphere and the development of the nuclear weapon, also climate change and so on, so on. The good news is we are not one minute to Domesday. We didn't move since last year, but we work to decrease it because the clock, it's not like it always go forwards, it can go down as well. So uh, let's try to make 2020 less minutes. To midnight at least 20 <laughs> that yes, that never yes, yeah but yes please yes marta what what is your prediction for next year when do you think the doomsday uh, minutes will look like i think um i have hope mm -hmm. and that's apparently what uh, we are good at and that's what makes us human that uh, the clock will start declining that i think Unfortunately, we humans tend to uh, get stupid every now and again. But when uh, maybe some scary things start coming, maybe we can reach for the wisdom and um, start, you know, seeing what's happening and actually start taking actions towards the better. Yeah, uh, exactly. And I would like to say that here, actually, the certainty of the doomsday would be something that could shake us up. I have just a couple of days ago revisited a movie which is called The Day When the Earth Stood Still, the new version with Keanu Reeves, which basically talks about the scenario where we put the Earth into a, such a horrible state that alien civilization or actually the, the whole kind of a government of aliens that are very advanced are deciding to basically get rid of us, only us, Earth stays as it was, so Earth can thrive and live. And uh, I don't want to spoil the movie, but there is a very, uh, so you don't know how it will end, but there is a very interesting quote from the guy who actually came to exterminate us that they, their, he, his civilization was also on the brink of destruction. And then they had the threat of their own son dying and they had to go on a higher spiritual and development level and this is when they started to respect the place where they are respect each other so it could be that one last wake-up call you know if we would know that okay we have like literally five years guys if we don't change it's game over so uh, marta maybe that is uh, something that could help the humanity to wake up yeah, at least that's uh, that's what I am hoping for. And I, yeah, I'm not a very big fan of the dark future. So, yes, no one is, I think. And now I have something super interesting. Uh, we have some predictions from a guy who is called Noah, the time traveler. Last year on YouTube, a guy recorded a video when he claims that he is a time traveler and he has just been to, 2000, to 2030. He was sent by the government, uh, but when he came back, he decided to run away so he can share the news with us. And he is always on the hunt, so he covered his face while, while making the video and so on, so on. So he has made a couple of predictions, which he claims are not prediction because he actually went to the future and he saw it. But the most interesting part about 2019 is that starting from 2019 to 2020, 
uh, we will see a huge and massive spike of UFO sightings. People will see them everywhere. In February 2019, a massive snowstorm will hit Midwest. Multiple cities are wiped out by snowstorms. It's the biggest snowstorm in history. So guys, let's just wait till February and see what happens in Midwest. If the guy is legit, then I guess this will happen. And then he also predicts a lot of other very interesting things. I will just name a few. Aliens will appear officially. We will have a communication by 2030 uh, and they will uh, be hostile. Humans uh, and aliens, some of the races will actually gain peace and will live in peace. Uh, we will discover a new planet in our solar system and time travel will become possible uh, for more people than just him. Uh, another war will occur human beings will be connected to computers and there will be no, mon no more common core education. So the schools as we know it will not exist. Um, and we will become one big country. There will be no borders. So this is the world in 2030, according to this guy. Is there anything that even remotely sound for you as a reasonable thing that will happen in 11 years? The education part. The educa okay, the education part. That's the only thing that you think will happen. No, it's not that like it's the most probable. It's it's like the one that if something has to happen from it, that one I am okay with. Okay, <laughs> you are okay. Dennis. Three minutes. Yeah. Um, I think the the education part is possible, but only if all the borders are erased and we're one big country, because. I don't know any country right now except parts of America that's willing to give up Common Core. Mm -hmm. and so it's possible, but only if nation states doesn't exist anymore, I think. Okay, yeah, that's that's a that's a, that's a good observation. But the but snowstorms, yeah. Let's probably. let's look at the storms, uh, snowstorms in Midwest in February 2019 because that's something he said happened, and he comes from the future. I would like to finish this wonderful and upbeat show with the most interesting predictions from Nikki, the celebrity. Psychic. She is very famous. She claims that she serves people like Matt Damon and Madonna and she consults them. Just no one wants to say because you know how it is. And her predictions are among others. Penguin will invade cities. Uh, yes, I know. Uh, a parrot will break into a White House. A fist fight between two news anchors on live TV broadcast. A politician will strip naked on live TV. I want to see that. I really want to see that. There will be a sex scandal around British royalty. And uh, she also says that there will be a sinkhole in downtown Manhattan swallowing cars. There will be um, a member of royal family kidnapped. She also claims that a famous politician will end up in coma and John Travolta and Britney Spears will have car accidents. That's something that we can check. Um, she also claims that uh, North Korean President Kim Jong Un is in danger and could die. But that's not the first psychic that says that. Uh, she also uh, claims that uh, Vladimir Putin has to be careful. Uh, because he might die choking on food and dogs will invade cities along the penguins. So, guys, you know, uh, and there will be an attempt to impeach Donald Trump, but it will be unsuccessful. And also Kim Kardashian and Kanye West, Jay-Z and Beyonce will split. So, guys, she actually has... I think around 650 predictions for 2019. Those are just the most ballsy and the ones that we can actually check because we can see next year if Beyonce and Jay-Z are still together, you know. So uh, really, I was <laughs> blown away and I like her because she's specific. And if she's specific, I can check her, you know. So let's see if Nikki, the psychic to the stars, is right 
or wrong. So guys, I think that we have to go off now. So I would like to say thank you very much thank for this you. show. And yes, Denise, is it correct? We are almost... Yeah, 30 seconds. 30 seconds. So Marta, what is your prediction for 2019? I have no predictions and I am too blown away after Nikki to, uh, <laughs> to even try to think of something because I would just look uh, very... Poor. What what do you think Nikki uh, from Nikki will happen? You have 10 seconds to decide. Jay-Z and Beyonce. Split? Remember that because we will check it in January 2020. Thank you guys. I hope you enjoyed it and have a great Friday night. Bye. You are listening to You've Got 5 Options radio show where we hopefully convinced you that five indeed is a magic number. To catch up with our previous programs, apply to be our guest, send us your life challenge, or just to see how do we really look like, visit our website, the5options.com. We hope you enjoyed this episode and that you will come for more. That's all, folks!